to finish with the four principles of Hermes, the, um, the subsequent ones. So we've done the principle of mentalism, the principle of correspondence, and the principle of vibration. Now after that comes the principle of polarity, and um, everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical, are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. Uh, this principle embodies the truth that everything is dual, everything has two poles, everything has its pair of opposites, all of which were old hermetic axioms. It explains the old paradoxes that have perplexed so many which have been stated as follows. Thesis and antithesis are identical in nature but different in degree. Opposites are the same, differing only in degree. The pairs of opposites may be reconciled. Extremes meet. Everything is and isn't at the same time. All truths are half-truths. Every truth is half-false. There are two sides to everything, etc., etc. It explains that in everything there are two poles or opposite aspects and that opposites are really only two extremes of the same thing with many varying degrees between them. To illustrate, heat and cold, although opposites, are really the same thing. <clears throat> the differences consisting merely of degrees of the same thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at your thermometer and see if you can discover where heat terminates and cold begins. There is no such thing as absolute heat or absolute cold. The two terms heat and cold simply, simply indicate varying degrees of the same thing and that same thing which manifests as heat and cold is merely a form, variety and rate of vibration. Then comes the principle of rhythm. Everything flows out and in, everything has its tides, all things rise and fall, the pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. Fantastic, isn't it? <clears throat> But um, the Hermetists have grasped this principle, finding its universal application and also and have also, by use of the appropriate formulas and methods, they apply mental law of neutralization. So neutralization is what I was talking about before, where rather than being extremely excited one day and happy and blissful, and then extremely depressed the next. The uh, Hermetist um, practiced the principle of neutralization. They cannot annul the principle or cause it to cease its operation, but they have learned how to escape its effects upon themselves to a certain degree, depending upon the mastery of the principle. They have learned how to use it instead of being used by it. In this and similar methods consist the art of the Hermetists. The master of, her of Hermetics polarizes himself at the point at which he desires to rest and then neutralizes the rhythmic swim of, swing of the pendulum which would tend to carry him to the other pole. <coughs> That's why the more your consciousness grows, the more you expand your consciousness and grow in knowledge, the more everything starts to come into the middle. Your mood swings, your temperament, everything. Everything comes into the middle. And thank goodness for that. Well, <laughs> I say, being a, a hot-headed Aryan, well, in my younger days, my God, woof, <laughs> to be um, <clears throat> a Calabrian and Aryan, um, <laughs> and male uh, I'm so glad that knowledge has had the effect that it has on me and helped me to bring all of those forces into the middle 
Uh, all individuals who have attained any degree of self-mastery do this to a certain degree, more or less unconsciously. But the master does this consciously. And by the use of his will. And attains a degree of poise and mental firmness almost impossible of belief on the part of the masses who are swung backward and forward like a pendulum. Have you noticed the masses, how they go from you know, communism to democracy and anarchy to socialism to fascism? <clears throat> the princi this principle and that of polarity have been closely studied by the Hermetists and the methods of counteracting, neutralizing and using them for an important part of the hermetic mental alchemy. The sixth principle, the principle of cause and effect. Well, in the new series of uh, videos, Prisca Theologia, there's going to be a lot of cause and effect. So, uh, <clears throat> that will deal with that. Uh, but Hermes has this to say. Every cause has its effect, every effect has its cause, everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes this law. This principle embodies the fact that there is a cause for every effect, an effect from every cause. It explains that everything happens according to law and nothing ever merely happens, that there is no such thing as chance, that while there are various planes of cause and effect, the higher dominating the lower planes, still nothing ever entirely escapes this, the law. The Hermetists understand the art and methods of rising above the ordinary plane of cause and effect. To a certain degree, and by mentally rising to a higher plane, they become causes instead of effects. You see, this is where powers are starting to return to us to become causes. And we are creating and manifesting much, much more rapidly now. We are learning some old skills. They are coming back. Uh, the masses of people are carried along obedient to environment, to the wills and wills and desires of others stronger than themselves, hereditary, heredity, uh, suggestion and other outward causes moving them about like pawns on a chessboard of life. But the masters, rising to the plane above, dominate their moods, characters, qualities and powers as well as the environment surrounding them and become movers instead of pawns. They play a part... They, um, they help to play the game of life instead of being played and moved about by the wills and environment. <clears throat> they cause... <clears throat> excuse me. They use the principle instead of being its tools. The masters obey the causation of the higher planes, but they help to rule on their own plane. In this statement there is condensed a wealth of hermetic knowledge. Let him read who can. The last principle, the seventh, the principle of gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. This principle embodies the truth that there is gender manifested in everything, the masculine, the feminine principles ever at work. This is true not only of the physical plane, but on the mental and even spiritual planes. On the physical plane, the principle manifests as sex. On the higher planes, it takes higher forms, but the principle is ever the same. No creation, physical, mental or spiritual, is possible without this principle. An, an understanding of its laws will throw light on many a subject that has perplexed the minds of men. The principle of gender works ever in the direction of generation, regeneration and creation. Everything and every person create, contains the two elements or principles, or this great principle within it, him or her. Every male thing has the female element also. Every female contains also the male principle. 
If you would understand the philosophy of mental and spiritual creation, generation and regeneration, you must understand and study this hermetic principle. It contains the solution of many mysteries of life. We caution you that this principle has no reference to the many base, pernicious and degrading lustful theories, teaching and practices, teachings and practices, which are taught under fanciful titles and which are a prostitution of the great natural principle of gender. Such base revivals of the ancient infamous forms of phallicism tend to ruin mind, body and soul and the hermetic philosophy has ever sounded the warning note against these degraded teachings which tend toward lust, licentiousness and perversion of nature's principles. If you seek such teachings you must go elsewhere for them. Hermeticism contains nothing for you along these lines. To the pure all things are pure. To the